months ago at DevCon 3, we launched AIFDE. AIFDE's purpose is to accelerate you by operating the platform for you. It does this by helping you build and edit your ontology, perform data integrations, fix issues, build applications, and more. Its goal is to move human work into AI work, letting you focus on the work that matters to your organization. Today, we're here to show you how that's actually happening in production and some of the future of what AIFD looks like. We have two pioneers here to share the sto their stories and the different ways that they leverage AIFD. Chris Simpson from Lear and Stephen Ecker from Trinity Industries. They're going to walk you through their use cases and discuss where AIFD is headed. Chris, why don't you start us off and tell us about Lear and some of the challenges that you're facing. Thanks, Arkin. Good morning. Um, so let's go forward. Uh, my name is Chris Simpson. So I work at Lear Corporation, and I'm responsible for leading our foundry strategy and implementation there. For those of you who do not know, Lear Corporation is the largest US-based automotive supplier, mainly supplying automotive seating and electrical components to more than 480 uh, different vehicles around the world. We do this with a team of over 170,000 folks spread across more than 250 factories uh, in 37 different countries. And with a footprint this large, there's really no way that we can deliver all of the needs of the business with a central team by itself. So as a result, we went through and we chose to democratize the platform. And that strategy is working. When we started our enterprise contract in March of last year, we had about 100 users and four use cases that we started with. Now that number has grown to over 16,000 users and more than 280 approved use cases that are in either development or production. We manage this with a pretty lean central business and IT team and are always challenged with being able to enable builders inside of this platform. And to give you an idea, there's more, roughly about 1,000 of those 16,000 users are actually building components inside of the platform today. This is one of the main reasons why when Ankit announced AIFTE last DevCon, I was super excited because this is a way for us to be able to improve the bandwidth of both our central team as well as the builders themselves. Immediately was able to go through and share with the teams. And while we do go through and use it with some production use cases, like Stephen will go through here in a few minutes, I wanted to take a few minutes this morning to talk about everyone's favorite topic around how we can use it for governance and documentation. And so by show of hands, who likes writing documentation? <laughs> right. It's about the same split at Lear, and that is not many. So our European seating founder team actually came up with this uh, first example here, which was testing AIFTE to be able to help both understand and document a data set that they had been asked to help out on. As you can see, it does a pretty great job with very little context or prompting. But one of the key things that we discovered that it could do is that it actually is really, really good at being able to understand the business context of the data in that data set. And this got us thinking, well, if it could do it for a data set, could it do it for an ontology? And of course, the short answer is yes. It was able to pull in all of the objects, all of the links, even traverse back to the backing data sets and sources that underlie or underpin those objects. And this prompt here is really pretty simplistic. But even with that, it's still returning really good contextualized information. Things as simple as a detailed description on what the object is, being able to go through and get the table schema. And really, one of the really cool discoveries we actually found was that AIFTE was able to go through and decode our business-specific or Lear-specific acronyms as well, generally getting them about 90 95% of the time, which is pretty great when we gave it no additional help whatsoever. And while I know it may not seem like much, keep in mind, again, that we have over 1,000 builders in this platform. Without good descriptions, without good documentation, we have very little chance of being able to build a kind of a reusable enterprise ontology. And now this documentation is great, but it's still just sitting here inside of the AIFTE app. So leveraging AIFTE again, it's really a pretty simple uh, request to be able to create a branch and now update those individual objects with the descriptions and the details that we just created. And again, this is a pretty simple overall workflow or simple task, but this whole workflow really unlocks some really awesome capabilities for us. Because this additional metadata not only improves the search results for our human users, it also benefits AIP itself. 
Object Search is now an AIP Logic Agent Studio and a soon to be announced AIP app will all benefit from this improved context descriptions that this documentation now provides. And in the future, we're looking for not just being able to rely on a member of our central team to approve existing ontology proposals, but actually envisioning using AIP to work directly one-on-one -on -one with that builder to be able to build a better structure, document, organize that object from the very beginning. Even better yet, being able to actually tell the user, hey, here's some objects that may already meet your need or that we can modify to be able to make that use case um, that more effective without having to go through and replace or duplicate some of the objects that we already have. So I know that documentation and governance are not always the most exciting parts. I appreciate you sticking with me for that. Um, but really, these are the parts that really help to keep our ontology clean, discoverable, and usable at scale. And with AIFTE, I think that we'll now be able to do this without really slowing down anymore. So I appreciate the time. I'm going to hand it back over to Ankit. Thanks. Awesome. Next up, I'd like to invite Stephen to show you how Trinity Industries is using AIFTE to take on a pretty ambitious migration and how it's helping them move faster there. All right, thank you. Um, quick overview of Trinity Industries. We were founded in 1933. Uh, we are a premier rail car manufacturer and lessor. We partner with the uh, railroads, shippers, and other lessors to move over 900 commodities across North America. We're deeply integrated into the North American supply chain. So our journey with Palantir really started around COVID. Uh, first use case was a steel management workflow to reduce our excess steel. It was widely successful. Uh, from there, we kind of moved on to internal development, building platforms for establishing our bill of material from estimating to engineering. And then eventually, our most ambitious project, we sunset our legacy supply chain planning platform with custom development at Palantir. The one thing I'll say is kind of our scope and requirements began to grow and our resources remained the same. You know, we started seeing more challenges, you know, managing the ontology as our engineers are switching from project to project, task to task, uh, but the, the users are only asking for more. So today, our planning, estimating, procurement, and even engineers are operating in Foundry, and Foundry is extremely versatile, as in you can get into an ontology and you can understand it, but there's still a lot of code base that needs to be dived into to truly make enhancements and optimizations. So uh, we, while we had embraced LLMs with probably more than most, so we've been using it for code writing, and it's great at writing code, providing the right context is a challenge. So we've had access to AIFDE for a couple months now, and I will say so far the results have been terrific. We've narrowed in on kind of three core ways we're using it. One, for exploration, which is understanding our complex models so more people can contribute. Two is debugging, which is finding and fixing our bottlenecks faster. And then lastly, it's just creation, which is establishing kind of a usable model where we can jump in and later harden or optimize. So, I mentioned the supply chain project. One of our most challenging aspects of this was to build a custom MRP engine where we could simulate out the impacts to procurement. As in production planning would update the schedule, it will run through an MRP that's outside of our ERP, and then procurement can review the changes and impacts to supply, approve it, and then we can commit the schedule. Now this MRP has to mimic what our ERP does, and that runs nightly for two hours, and we have to be able to run in a few minutes. Um, so this is more than just complex logic, it's timing, there's part relationships, and then there's priorities that got to be established. I literally had to assign a PhD data scientist just to try to comprehend the thousands of lines in the utility function. You know, our heads were spinning. And then eventually I tasked one of our development managers to say, hey, you got to get in, we got to see this to fruition. This is actually his work over here. The first thing he did after not being involved in the various conversations with our supply chain consultants and experts is he asked AIFD, you know, how does this work? And it was fantastic. <laughs> it, spit, it spit out an executive summary, design diagrams that explained it better than even our best MRP experts could do. Uh, the results, an engineer can become credible in hours and not have to participate in the thousands of hours that we, I feel like we spent in conversations getting to this point. 
But it goes beyond that. So obviously understanding the ontology is one thing. Uh, and, and Foundry was already good, uh, pretty good at that. You know, you could jump in with the lineage and some of the things you saw earlier. You know, we heavily utilize that. But it still takes effort to really diagnose code. So in this case, we asked AIFDE to build us a diagnostic framework for that MRP engine. The purpose to be that truth checker for planned orders and the supply actions. And this is another thing that was debated for months. You know, how do we establish the measurement? And it's one thing to establish the measurement, but it's, it's another to understand the impact of the diagnostics. And what it did, are these orders reasonable? You know, are lead times respected? Are shortages handles correctly? And what it did here, it's lagging a little bit, but it drafted the test harness, probed the edge cases, and then reports back in plain English so we can iterate until the behavior matches how we see it on the planning floor. Now last, as a data analytics org leader, I'm surprised by the amount of app development we are now facing two years. I would have never guessed that. We've accumulated a lot of TypeScript we're now managing, and we are bringing in web app, people from the web app team, but mostly we're just challenging data engineers who love their PySpark, Python, to go learn TypeScript, optimize, add to this. And that's been one of our bigger challenges, and our planning team loves these big pivot views and we were facing timeout issues as they wanted 10,000 rows in a pivot table. Uh, so after conversations with Palantir production support, it's like, well, first you've got to optimize this. And second, I think you need to upgrade. You need, need more memory. So this might be a simple task for others, but I'm tasking data engineers who have very limited TypeScript ability to say, all right, go rewrite all our TypeScript code so we can upgrade to version 2. So this is actually the first thing we use AIFDE for. We threw it in and said, hey, it has all the documentation, convert the code for us. Uh, AI references those foundry docs, generates the conversions, flags the fix, and reruns for us. We are able to get the code, optimize, and go from pre-filtering these ma major pivot tables to them loading in sub-seconds. And the beautiful part about it is you can create a foundry branch, run this while you work on other things. I have people that are running multiple AI FDEs at a single time. They come back, see the result. Either it got all the way there, or worst case, you've got a coherent way to approach the problem. So overall, I would say we're very bullish on AI FDE and the impact that it can have. It can help us uh, explore our lineage. Let's get forced in now. <laughs> explore our lineage, validate our, our models, and then ship products a lot faster. Cool, thank you. All right, some questions for you at the there. Yeah. All right, uh, Chris, I think some of these elements that we've seen here are mirror things that you've talked about with, uh, with me. Um, I think one thing that's particularly interesting here is the build versus buy calculus for you at Lear. Um, can you talk a little bit more about what that's like? Yeah, sure. So. Really, AIFTE kind of adds a whole new variable to the traditional make versus buy equation, right? Before, if we wanted to go through and build our own MES system or ERP system or whatever acronym system you want to talk about, you have to go through and have a dedicated group of software folks that work for months, if not years, to be able to go through and develop that version. Then you have to have a support team or you have to hire an SI to support it, and it becomes a pretty big endeavor. With AIFTE, now the discussion is about well, does it need to be that large? Probably not, but how many, right? Steven gives an example of some smaller teams or even a single person. That then is a really pretty interesting discussion now for us to have with some of the IT folks when it comes to new capabilities. But for us, a bigger thing is actually looking at the existing suite of custom coded applications that we have acquired and built over the last 30 years. Like I said, we have 250 factories. We have a lot of smart folks and they work and solve problems. But now those architectures don't really play that well in 2025. So how do we go through and now upgrade those? There's been a lot of projects, a lot of discussions around that. Well now, being able to pull those into Foundry, be able to leverage the ontology that we've already built, leverage all the connections that we have, and then have those applications get folded into the broader piece, and being able to use AIFTE to make that faster, make that simpler, it's a really interesting conversation that we're now going through and, and actively doing. So. That's very cool, especially just bespoke software for your specific use case. Sure. It's very, very cool to see. Um, Steven, well, you mentioned uh, 
TypeScript as something that was, that was novel to you and maybe some of the other folks on your team, and how AIFD is expanding that profile of uh, who can build in the platform and what they can build. Can you talk a little bit more about how that's impacted uh, Trinity Industries? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll use an example. So when we were working on that supply chain project, you know, we had that bill of material platform, and I have a senior director, he was actually a legal background, a very smart guy, uh, he can code, but he's not developing in Foundry regularly. Uh, and he was getting frustrated because all our resources were tied up on other things, and the users wanted this alternate framework for creating the quotes. Uh, we had estimated, hey, we're gonna get to it in maybe two months, we kept giving, and then that, that date kept moving out. He got frustrated, grabbed F AIFDE, and he, he vibe-coded it up in about two hours. I was like, all right, we got a, a usable framework here. But we did bring our engineers back in, and we put that into production. And in, uh, in uh, just a couple of days, after telling the users for months, it's like, ah, oh, we can't get to it right now. And I would say it, it does open it up. You don't need, I, I got in there, I'm not, regularly coding. I was one of the first ones to try the TypeScript conversion and said, I don't know anything about TypeScript, but you can jump in there, get pretty close to it where you can bring an expert, so you might have to tweak a thing there, or you could just rerun AIFDE and re keep re-optimizing it until you get there, which uh, really democratizes the ability to develop. Cool. Yeah, that's that, that's awesome to see, especially expanding that profile from lawyers to um, even just scaling up your engineering teams that already are able to go in and build, but may not have the time or capacity to do everything. I like the the baiting of your engineers to get 90% of the way there. Don't you want Don't you want to get it across the line? Um, so one of the things that we we have heard from for especially use cases like that, but really from both of you and from many of our customers using AFD is. Uh, how can we get more of the platform in, in there? Not just, hey, um, we can work in code and other things. I see a few nods here as well. Um, we always get asked about, wait, what about no-code tools? I really love using Pipeline Builder. I really like using Logic. W where is that? So we do have one more thing, which is uh, today at DevCon, you'll be able to try out an early preview of some of these capabilities. Um, we've figured out how to expose some of these no-code tools and other parts of the platform in a way that interoperates with AIFD. So you'll be able to use Pipeline Builder and Logic and uh, soon other tools like that uh, within AIFD as well. And this will interact across all of the workflows that you can, you can do in AIFD. So this really adds that flexibility of being able to use the tools that you prefer and the tools that you're most comfortable with. So for example, if you're most comfortable seeing and reviewing these kinds of transformations in Pipeline Builder, you can do that. Or if you want to see it in code repositories, you can do that as well. So really excited to see what uh, everyone here builds with AIFD and see where both Lear and Trinity Industries take it from here. So thank you for sharing.